The other idea about Nietzsche is uh, on his idea of morality. He presents the argument that uh, morality is a human illusion and that uh, you know there's not such a thing as good and evil. And these are all kind of constructs. Do you think there's such a thing as uh, good and evil that's connected to some objective reality? I think that there are some... I actually do believe that there are some universals. I'm not Kantian in any way, but I do think that there are some universals. And the thing that actually brought me to even the concept of that was Jung. So, you know, Jung's concept of the collective unconsciousness and then taking that thought and then applying it to looking through his history and uh, the most varied history you can find. Uh, so I would say probably religion is your earliest one that you can get for for written history or uh written examples of human behavior and psychology at its at, at the the furthest that we can look into it uh with you know from man's hand to whatever the medium is cuneiform or whatever but as you do that and then let's say going from mesopotamia to india to you know, Europe to, and just going from all these places as disparate as they may seem, as many different cultures and ethnicities and religions and how the religions will, will vary quite a bit from monotheist to you know, uh, mono, uh, polytheist and so on and so forth. But then just seeing how there's all the through lines. And, and of course, Campbell, he did this uh, much earlier than, than than me thinking about it. But uh, I think that by looking at things that way and starting to find the threads instead of always just looking at everything as being its own compartmentalized concept as if it only applies to this time this people like getting overly pomo about it is just a really idiotic one, postmodern so you you think that there is a just like joseph campbell there's a thread that connects all of these stories narratives that we construct for ourselves as we evolve and that thread is grounded in some kind of absolute ideas of maybe on the morality side, which is the trickiest one of good and evil. Somewhat, yeah. I think that a lot of this stuff is just derived from a biological perspective. I feel like these things are in, innate within us. Do like, you think our innately humans are good? Like we? No, <laughs> I don't. I feel like I also feel like there's the issue of scale too. Like. Um, like Nassim Taleb likes to talk about how he views his, the way he interacts with, with groups in terms of scale. You know, uh, what is this thing about like at, a at the familial level, I'm a, I'm a communist. And then at the, the civic level, I'm a, I'm a Republican or something. And at this other level, I'm a, and then it goes on at the widest level, he's a libertarian or something of that nature, you know, like fundamentally human interaction changes on scale, on scale and scale. And also, uh, from, uh, you know, subjective to the environment around them. So, and I don't even mean environment just in the sake of physical environment, uh, nature, right? Like nature is constantly trying to murder you. Well, it's not really trying. It's just nature's being nature. <laughs> yeah. The universe is the universe. And uh, at times it takes you out. It's yeah. just not with any particular uh, compunction or prejudice. It's just, oops, you know, oh, sorry, there's no more dodos. Uh, my bad. But don't you think the particular flavor of the complexity that is the human mind was created, like, let me make an argument for that pe all people are fundamentally good. <laughs> okay. Is uh, there's an evolutionary advantage to being, to striving to uh, cooperate, mm -hmm. to add more love to the world mm -hmm. of like compassion, empathy, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. And that the very thing that created the human mind was this evolutionary advantage, whatever the forces behind mm -hmm. this evolutionary advantage. And At scale, yes. So <laughs> when we're dealing with a small tribe, sure. Yeah. When you meet another tribe, maybe. There's other factors that are going into that. Let's say you scale up and so your 150 has exceeded their 150 and like you start yeah. to get to a certain point where um, you can't really be close enough to someone down the line of some of, of that next like that 150s 150 150 and they just now all of a sudden become some some guy whatever and when it comes to some guy at once it starts hitting scale i don't know that it's capable I, people can be as as magnanimous to the, a stranger as to the known if they orient themselves to be secure enough 
because it, it does come to security, insecurity in one way or the other, either brought on by the unknown, brought on by an actual threat, brought on by even their own, as we would use the word insecurity in that their own insecurity within their own capabilities, their own belief in themselves. All these things um, can change things from being compassionate and what have you to at least at the very least, maybe not evil, but self-interest driven to the point of a negative results for those that aren't, you know what I mean? Right. But another way to frame that is uh, maybe it's less about scale and more about the amount of resources available. So if we're overflowing with resources in terms of uh, security and safety, all the th uh, things you've mentioned, if we have more than enough resources, then the way we treat a stranger, the way we position ourselves mm -hmm. towards that stranger might be in a way that uh, allows us to be our real human selves as opposed to sort of our animal self. And therefore it's mostly about how clever can we descendants of apes be in coming up with all cool kinds of technologies and ways to uh, efficiently use the resources we have such that we're not constrained. And my hope is that we can, that human innovation mm -hmm. will outpace the growth of our the number of people that are starving for resources yes uh, i think that there's a lot of uh rationality behind uh this argument and you know, in in some ways i agree and and a, lo and a lot of ways i see it as missing the point of, of of how this experiment has has been playing out across time. When you look at uh, what re, what for one, it's like define resources. You know what is a what is a, a resource of of as humans uh, would would define it, right? Or wealth even. And so you can say, well, you know, an iPhone's a resource, the internet's a resource, uh, water obviously is a resource. But if we weigh them, what is more important to human beings? water, internet, or iPhones, it's water, right? So if we look at resources, if we start with what do human beings need to live? I mean, actually live, not live here in this bullshit fantasy creation extension of our own ingenuity and, you know, a prison of our own creation and also a paradise of our own creation. But this is not how human beings normally live. This is all built upon stuff on, on, uh, is built on concept on idea and some and and some of it's built on just well this is the paradigm so this is what you do human beings need food they need water to survive they need shelter from the elements mm -hmm. and they need certain skills to perpetuate these things and be able to pass them down so that they can so that these things don't become uh you don't end up in this this gap where you have to relearn things because if, if, if it's lost then th that time before you can get it back again is going to be uh, a dark ages of sorts, you know, or it's going to be de highly detrimental to, to your group because not knowing how to fish, not knowing how to hunt, mm -hmm. not knowing how to even clean and cook the game once you have it could be lethal. That's fascinating to think of that as a basic resource, the knowledge to attain the very low level things of water. And right, and we'll figure it out. We yeah. did it once before, and we've done it over and over and over and over again. It's just costly. Yes, it has costs, for sure. Um, but when you think of how you look at the, well, we'll just deal with the first world of the West. You look at the 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 path line, the pathway of, of Western civilization and its growth, and then you look at how technology injected into it over time you know, how it uh, magnifies uh, things or how it pushes things at, at uh, orders of magnitude faster. And then the internet comes along and even faster, you know. And so you're watching Industrial Revolution to, what is it, the, uh, the capacitor and then so on. It goes further and further. And as the internet and technology, especially on the electronic side of things, start increasing in capability, it massively outpaces even our uh, necessity for it at times. It, it becomes, you know, plant obsolescence happens quicker and over and over and over again. And wealth increases, 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 increases in terms of the things that we're able to acquire, right? Yeah. I mean, you, I've seen homeless people with, with smartphones, yeah. you know? So we're living in the most 
wealth laden, luxury laden age of all of humanity. Yet, what happens when we see calamity or people go on hard time? What are they? The things that they value, you know, what what is what do people go to an argument about the cost of things that are luxury items generally and not necessity items? Mm -hmm. You know, we get into fights about um, you know things that are at the end of the day not necessities to us. You know, people are so concerned about Netflix and and the internet. And I, personally, I'm very concerned about the internet because I look at it as my own little personal library of Alexandria in my pocket. Mm -hmm. That's what I love about it. And the ability to have a tool as effective as it is, even though I'm in a constant battle to not let that tool become a vice or to become something that, that actually brings me to a lower state. <laughs> but are we willing, the question is over the, are we willing to murder each other over Netflix versus murder each other over water? We're willing to murder each other over water. That's a given. You right, know. but that's our animalistic selves of that. Well, it's also a necessity for it's animalistic, but it's also either you do it or you don't, right? Like unless somebody's willing to share that water, or if that water is of such a limited uh, uh, ca uh, capability or uh, such a limited amount, then you will have to murder right. to have right that water. Netflix. The argument is the higher we get up to this hierarchy of what we consider in Los Angeles yeah. resources, yes, we, we're, we're less we're, willing to be, to commit violence. Yes, we're less willing to commit violence that, oh, I would say over Netflix, but we are willing to commit violence over Netflix, over everything associated with Netflix, over televisions, over sneakers, over, over, um, you know, I mean, when we look at uh, a good, a good, I mean, the majority of the stuff that came with the riots, I mean, it was used car dealerships, uh, targets, I mean, and then you look and it's like, well, okay, well, what are people, what do they got to, what are they so hell bent to get out of this whole thing? And I'm even talking about the ideological elements or anything like that. Just like, okay, something's going on, boom, looting, whatever. Yeah. We, you know, There's stuff. What, what are you going to loot? Yeah. You know, you'll have AOC say, oh, people needing bread. Like, I, I didn't see a single loaf of bread. You know, I saw te televisions <laughs> and poetry, shoes. poetry, Josh. And, you know, but to me, it is poetry in a sense because you get to see who we, how we actually are operating, you know, what, what are, where, what is becoming first principles to most people? But wait, wait, but you could also argue that those riots were more like the madness of crowds, which is oh, like- it's definitely a lot more than just that. I'm just saying that given a chance, it's like, okay, boom, the, the lights are off, the grid is down, we've, we've hacked into the whole system, <laughs> turned into an 80s movie, and you have the ability to go get a hold of whatever it is that you think is most important. And what do we do? And I say we, as in, you know, including all of us, we grab a TV, we, we attack it. We, we, we break into a sneaker store on Melrose. We do, it's just like, uh, we still giant cause statues where the value of that is completely market driven. Like it's just a piece of polypropylene or whatever butyl. And you know, it's cool. You know, I, I'm a big fan of art. Uh, but, uh, it's like, <laughs> you know, I yeah. can't eat that. And at the end of the day, man, you're sitting there with your, with your, like, what'd you do today, honey? What'd you get? You know, man, did we, we were able to, you know, oh, I got this, I got this designer art statue. <laughs> are, yeah. are, are you going to go, well, you can't really sell it on the, on like the art markets where people are really going to pay for it. Yeah. So are you going to become an underground art dealer with your one piece of cause art? One interesting thing, just uh, before I forget it, you mentioned the Library of Alexandria yeah. and your phone. Well, your phone, but also just thinking of your little world that you're creating for yourself on the internet. That's a really powerful way to actually phrase it. One of the things that uh, you've been on Joe Rogan several times. Although I've everybody always, always comes to me and go, oh, that was so great. I didn't know. You, you're on, you've been on Joe Rogan? I go, this is like my fifth time, dude. I've been a fan of yours for a long time from... Uh, from other avenues. Yeah, this is a long time coming, actually. Everybody, yeah. you have no idea. Like how many times through uh, messaging and missing each other over the years, this is ridiculous. This is a long time coming. You don't know, realize how special this is for us. This is, a, well, I'm also starstruck. We'll talk about this, but you symbolize something very important to me through my journey, through wrestling, through jujitsu, through judo, through just street fighting, through just combat. Mm -hmm. There's a... Uh, you're the, in some sense, the devil on my shoulder of like, of violence in a good, in the, in, in a, 
Devil gets a bad rap. He does. He does get a bad rap. I realize, you know, sitting encased in, in ice down at that, that low ass level, you know. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's, <laughs> but you know, the angel side is more like the athletic, the sport, the science, mm -hmm. the tech, the the technical, the chess side of things. So, 